All right, looks like we're coming through all right. Why don't I begin? Once again, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm the president and founder of Specialist Trading. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with my website, Specialist Trading, we feel we are your premier source for online education in trading the forex markets. And even though we provide you with strategies and signals to trade those strategies on a nightly basis, we are really about teaching you how to spot all these different uh, techniques and tips that I've accumulated in my 37 years of trading. Uh, to give you a little background about myself, as I stated, I've been trading for 37 years. I started out, my, my career actually began on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange, where I was a specialist on the floor, hence the name Specialist Trading. I was on the floor of the exchange for a total of 19 years, and uh, nine of those years I was a specialist for Donaldson, Lufkin, and Genret. So I've seen and traded just about every market imaginable. Uh, I, I've seen and traded uh, through crashes, through the crash of 87, through great bull markets. Uh, once I left the floor, I uh, continued to trade and I, that's where I started exper experimenting more with futures contracts and as well with the forex markets. So I've learned a great many things and now I just teach and mentor my students. And today I want to leave you with a really great technique. In fact, this is a simple pattern that signals a trend change. This is something that will really help you and it's so simple you can start using as early as today or tomorrow if you'd like. But I always uh, teach my students to paper trade so that you fully understand this. But I'll explain in detail. I'll show you some old charts and I'll show you some very current charts today just so you can uh, be easily uh, spotting this pattern. Okay, but before we begin, I just want to thank FXP for giving me the opportunity to speak and also for putting together this microsite for more information about what we uh, teach and about what we promote at Specialist Trading. This is the link if you want to learn more about myself, but we've abbreviated that, so you can actually copy this in the lower portion of the screen here. Uh, it's a lot shorter and a lot easier to copy. And don't worry, I will be, if you don't have a pencil or paper right now, I will be giving this link once more at the very end of the presentation. But if you happen to go to that link, what you'll find is more information about my website, more information about me, about offers, about discounts. And as you see right there, we have a special discounts where we give up to 500% or $500 off, I should say, for uh, fxstreet.com visitors. Now, we're required to show you this. Uh, one last thing before we begin. I ask that you please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you some performance results. Also, I'm going to show you a lot of uh, different examples with this technique. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of these results will be repeated in the future. So uh, as you're taking a look uh, at our disclaimer, uh, I'd also like to mention, for those of you who are new to my presentations, I love to take all the questions you may have. I see some people are already uh, conversing and chatting and asking me questions, but please, if you could wait till the very end, the presentation seems to flow a lot smoother if we wait till the last 15 minutes. So this won't be a real long presentation. I'll, I'll give you all the information rather quickly. But uh, if you happen to have a question, <clears throat> Excuse me. Once we begin, just write it down, or if you can remember it, and I promise I'll get to it at the very end. If we happen to run out of time, or if you come up with a question after I've concluded, don't worry, I'll leave you with an email address as well as a phone number where you can contact us at Specialist Trading and ask us any question you like. Okay, so thank you very much for waiting till the end of the presentation. Okay, now I'd like to start out today's webinar with something that was in the Los Angeles Times. That's where I'm based and that's where I work out and trade out of. And this was a, a year or so ago that came out, but it really hit home. At the, the title of this business article was Foreign Currency Trading is Easy. In fact, it's an easy way to lose money. More and more Americans are dabbling in currency trading and losing in a spectacular fashion. Experts say the structure of the currency markets make it hard for amateurs to beat the house. Now, for those of you who have attended my presentations in the past, I've often shown this um, article title here. And the reason I do this is because foreign currency actually is easy. I think the reason why most traders lose money, it's not because of the difficulty in trading. It's because they're getting in their own way. I think too many traders, and I know personally this is what happened to me when I first started trading, you're making your trading far too complicated. You're, you're really piling your plate on with too many indicators, too many uh, news events, too many chat rooms and trading rooms. And this really complicates your trading and, and it's, it, all it does is serve to really uh, just confuse you. 
And so that's why I really feel why, why most traders have such a difficult time, especially beginning traders, okay? So what we strive to do at Specialist Trading is simplify things. So once you simplify and really keep things as simple as possible, you'll see that currency trading is really easy. It's not, you know, we're not going to say here that every trade is, is a profitable one, but you'll make it much easier and you'll learn how to be in sync with the market because you'll learn how to listen to the market and not outside sources. So really, in our opinion, currency trading is easy. It's just ourselves that make it complicated. Now, my goal is to teach you how to trade with the specialist edge. Now, this is the same edge that was taught to me when I was on the floor that was able to turn my way of trading around. And this is what I do with my students and my members. And I do this also in my webinars for FX Street. Each uh, time I give a presentation, I leave you with something, a tip or a technique that you can actually use for free. All right, so here's what you're going to learn today. Here's what I'm giving you today. This is a simple but high probability technique for spotting trend changes in the Forex markets. Now, the reason why it's for finding the trend is go back and look at your last 5, 10, even 20 trades, okay, or investments, and look and see, uh, mostly, check out your losers. Most likely, it was because you were out of sync with the trend. Now, most uh, people have a very difficult time in finding and discerning what the trend is uh, because there are, once again, too many educators telling you what the trend should be. They're saying, well, uh, you know, this is the only way you should find out what a trend is, an uptrend is. And someone will say, no, actually, that's a downtrend. So there are a million and one ways to figure out what a trend is. But remember, we like to keep things simple. So I'm going to show you a simple technique for spotting trend changes. And then once you know the trend, after that, that's where it gets easy. That's where it gets simple. You just simply go with the trend. All right? You don't want to fight the trend. You just want to go with it. The difficult part is learning how to spot the trend. So this is a great technique for spotting uh, high probability changes in the Forex markets where trend changes take place. All right, so these are the indicators we're going to be using, just two very simple ones, the 50-period simple moving average, which we use in just about every technique at Specialist Trading, and then an outside day bar pattern. This is a two-bar pattern, okay? Now, when we say outside day bar pattern, you can use this on daily bars, you can use this on intraday bars, it doesn't matter, but we're going to teach you by showing you some older charts on daily bars, but then we'll show you some current examples where we go down to five minute time frames, we even go to a tick chart time frame. So even though it's an outside day, we'll say outside day, it doesn't have to be a daily bar. It can be a, it can be a weekly bar for all we, we care. All right, so for those of you who aren't familiar with what a outside day is, it's a two bar pattern. All right, outside days are days where the chart bar is both higher and lower than that of the previous day. Okay, I'll say that again. You may want to write this down. Outside days are days where the chart bar is both higher and lower than that of the previous day. Okay, now let's show you exactly what we mean. These are two examples of outside days. Now, here's where most students of mine get confused. They say, well, Steve, do we have to close at the high or close at the low? It doesn't matter. We're not concerned where the bars close, either of these. Okay, these are two examples. We're not concerned with closes at all or opens. So it doesn't matter if you're looking at a range bar. It doesn't matter if you're looking at a... Uh, candlestick bar. All we're concerned is that we have a two bar pattern here as you see and the second bar is bar number one and bar number two. Its range from top to bottom exceeds or overshadows the range of the previous day. That's it. That's called an outside day pattern. It doesn't matter if it closes at the top. It doesn't matter if it closes at the bottom. It doesn't matter where the previous day's close or open is. Okay? So don't get confused or don't worry about where the closes are. We're just concerned that we have two bars and that the second bar in that two bar pattern, its range is totally higher than the previous bar is high and totally lower than the previous bar is low. Okay, so that is an outside day. And then once again, it doesn't even have to be a daily bar. This could be a five minute time frame we're looking at right now. It could be a weekly or a monthly. But that's what we're looking for, this specific pattern. All right, so how is this technique implemented? All right, now we know that we're going to look for that two bar pattern. And we're also going to uh, apply a 50 period simple moving average. Well, what do we do? I mean, how do, how do we use this? Look for either bar. Remember, either the first or the second bar in that two bar pattern of an outside day pattern to touch the 50 period simple moving average. All right? So one of those two bars, one of them must be touching. doesn't matter if we close above or below, but just one of them must be touching. If both are touching, that's fine. But one of those in that two bar pattern must be touching the 50 period simple moving average.
This is your signal that a short-term trend may be underway. That's it. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Don't have to figure out all these crazy ideas of what the Fed is saying or what's going on economically or what someone is saying in a chat room. Just listen to the, what the market is telling you. All right. So let's look at some older charts just for educational purposes and see how this works. This is an older chart of the British pound. And looking at this on hindsight, we would say, well, there's really no clue here as to what the British pound is going to do. We're kind of going sideways. And you can see here we have the 50 periods of moving average. And price is just oscillating above and below in a range. So someone right here would say, well, I'm not going to do anything. This market's not giving me any insight. Uh, I don't have any idea what's going on in the British pound. But if you learn how to listen to the market, you would see that there was an outside day pattern right here. Okay? We have bar number one and bar number two. Bar number two's range exceeds the range of the previous bar. And the second bar is touching, intersecting the 50 periods of a moving average. So according to this technique, it's telling us the market itself is giving us a great clue that most likely there's going to be some short-term trend change or some trend is about to take place. Okay? And then look what happened. In the next uh, three to four weeks, we had nearly 500 uh, or 600 pips to the upside. Here's another example in the euro dollar. This is an older example, once again, not current, but just for educational purposes. Once again, someone could be looking at this chart and say, well, there's really no clear idea or view as to what the euro is going to be doing. We're oscillating back and forth. But if you learn how to listen to the market and keep your trading simple, don't listen to the outside influences of news or of uh, all these different trading rooms, but just listen to the market. Learn how to watch the chart. You'll see that we have an outside day pattern right here. Here we have one and two. The second day's range exceeds the first day's range. And both bars are touching the 50 periods of the moving average. Okay? And then we see a couple of days later, same thing. We have another one. Okay, so right now the market is giving us two clues that there's most likely a trend change coming. Before any news came out, before anyone announced something, before any support was broken or met, it doesn't matter. And then look what happened. 800 pips to the downside in the next month. All right? Now, someone would say, okay, this is great, Steve, but wouldn't it be better if we kind of had an idea of what uh, is the trend direction or which you know, clue as to which direction it's going to go? Yes, and the market is also giving you a clue. Let's look back at our examples here. And first of all, here's how we're going to fine-tune it. If the high or low of the outside bar, that's the second bar, that's the one whose range exceeds the first bar. If the high or low of that bar is exceeded on the next bar, so regardless of the high or low is exceeded, then the trend will most likely, not guaranteed, but most likely continue in that direction. So that's your clue as to which direction it's going to go. Let's look back at those examples again. Here was the British pound. Here's the two-bar pattern. Okay. So we know that there's a big chance, not for certain, not guaranteed, but there's a really high probability chance that there's going to be a trend change. But which way? Well, we wait for the next bar to tell us because... The next bar either has to trade above this bar's high or below this bar's low. And that's going to give us the clue. But it has to be on the next bar. Well, we see that the very next bar exceeded the range of the top, okay, of the high of that previous day's range. Doesn't matter where it closes, once again, doesn't matter where it opened. All that matters is that it traded one pip higher than the previous bar or one pip lower, depending on what happened. In this case, it traded one pip higher. So right off the bat, before any news was announced, before any support or resistance was broken, before anyone said in their trading room, here's what I think is going to happen in the British pound, the market was telling you we were most likely going to have a trend change to the upside. And that was your clue. Okay? So while we were giving us these clues, while the market was giving us these clues, you could have started formatting your strategy to look for buy signals in the British pound. You were that much ahead of the game. How about the euro dollar? Remember we originally said, well, uh, we have a couple of signals here. Well, we didn't exceed anything here, so the market didn't give us any clues. So that's why no action was taken. They really didn't have any idea because on this bar following, nothing exceeded the high or the low. But then on this particular outside bar pattern, well, what happened? If we look at the higher range and the low range of the euro dollar on that second bar, we see here that the low was exceeded. So right off the bat, we now know that the euro dollar is giving us a really clear clue that we're most likely going to have a trend to the downside. And while it was starting to have 
just while it began to go lower, you could have started looking for ways to short the euro dollar. Okay? Didn't have to listen to any news, didn't have to listen to any announcement. Why? Because the market told you in advance. All right, so let's look at some current technique examples using multiple time frames. We showed you some older examples just so you could understand the process. I'm going to show you some current technique examples. And these are uh, uh, examples that have happened anywhere from the last month or so to the last couple of days. All right, here's the British pound going back to just a couple of weeks, the uh, 26th of uh, June. And this is on an hourly chart. We see here that the British pound is just pretty much going sideways. Nothing much is happening. And what do we see here? We have an outside day pattern. Even though it just uh, is on an hourly chart and it just pretty much exceeds the range of top and bottom by a little bit, it still meets all the requirements. And guess what? On the next bar, we exceeded it. So at this point right here, the market was telling you that most likely we're going higher. So you should start looking for buy setups. It doesn't mean that you should just jump in and buy at the market. This is not a strategy. This is not a trading system. This is simply a technique to identify the current trend change. That's all it is. Okay, so at this point, you would have started looking to go long. But then what this technique does sometimes is that it reverses very soon, but it will reverse. So as we see right here, while we're looking for buy signals, we have another setup. And on this setup of the second bar, guess what? Well, we traded below. So now we have changed our clue as to what the trend is. The trend is now telling us that we're most likely going to be going lower. This is the way this technique works. It can change after a couple of uh, bars or so. It doesn't happen a lot, so I don't want you to think that it's going to be oscillating back and forth every couple of days. It's not like that. But every once in a while it will, especially if you go in smaller time frames. So on a 60-minute chart, you were about to look to go long, but now you're looking and getting ideas to go short. And so, guess what? The British pound fell 200 pips in the next day or so. So there are a number of ways here on pullbacks you could have looked to gone short the British pound. How about a daily chart of the euro? This is going back to April, May and into June. At the end of June, we see here that we have our first outside day pattern. It's just touching. The, the second day is touching the 50 periods of the moving average. As you can see, we went below it on the next bar, 500 pips to the downside. Then we have another example here, an outside day pattern. The next day went below, but nothing much happened until we got a change, another clue from the market telling us, you know what, we may be going higher now because we traded above. So that was your clue, and then the euro dollar went up 400 pips. Okay? So you had some two nice, real nice different trend changes that you could have taken advantage of either going short or going long. How about a monthly chart of the Canadian dollar? Now, if you're going out further out in the time frame, you're going to have to go back further. You won't have a lot of examples that say you would have on daily or even hourly charts. So we have to go back to 2010. And if we look back, we see here that at the mid part of actually 2009, we had a really large two-bar pattern here, outside day. And on the very next month, what happened? We went below the outside bar. And so look what happened. 1,300 pips to the downside in the next year in the Canadian dollar. So if you're an investor and you need to know the long-term trend, you can still apply this technique. How about a weekly chart of the Australian dollar? This is going back from May all the way up until the beginning of July of this month. Now we look here on a weekly chart. Roughly in May, just a couple of months ago, there was really no uh, idea of what the Australian dollar was going to be doing. We were pretty much in a rangy pattern. Nothing was giving us any clues. A lot of people could say, well, the Australian dollar is just kind of going sideways. Stay away from it. But you being the savvy trader that you are who now has these tips that I teach you, notice that there was an outside day pattern here coming into the month of May on a weekly time frame. What was that telling you? It was telling you that the most likely is going to be some nice intermediate term trend change in the Australian dollar. It all depended where the next bar traded, if we traded above or below. And as you can see, we traded below. And we've all been following the Australian dollar go lower and lower. It's funny how in May, this simple technique warned you that we were going lower. Okay? A lot of people have been really hurt by the Australian dollar continuing to go lower and lower and lower. Well, we knew in May when, when it was going sideways that there's most likely going to be a, a strong move to the downside. How about if you're looking at a four-hour chart of the Australian dollar? Well, say you had looked at the weekly chart and said, well, it looks like we're going to be headed lower. I'll go down 
and confirm this on the smaller time frame. All right, I don't particularly use this in my trading, but I know a lot of traders do. They like to have the higher time frame confirm the lower time frame. So once you knew that the higher time frame in weekly was giving you a downtrend, well then you can go to a four hour chart and look for the same things. As you see here, this was uh, just about three weeks ago. The Australian dollar has been going down and all the while there were clues. Here's a two bar pattern. Once we traded below, we went lower. Here's another one, a two bar pattern. All giving you signs right here. Here's another one. And there's another one. All giving you signs confirming that we're headed lower on a smaller time frame. So if you didn't want to trade weekly bars, you could have gone down to the four hour bars in the Australian dollar. And the Australian dollar continues to go lower. It has stabilized a little bit, but it really hasn't shown any signs of bottoming out. So stay with the trend. How about a daily chart of the Swiss franc? This is going from May into June. As we see here, before this nice rally appeared, we had an outside day pattern. We wait for the next day to tell us which direction most likely, not guaranteed, but high probability we will continue. And we exceeded the high, so this tells us that we're most likely going higher. We went higher about 250 pips. How we sold off, came back to the 50 period simple moving average. Nothing much happened here until we got another signal that we're going higher again. And this was in the middle of May and we went up another 300 pips. Okay. How about the Canadian dollar going on a daily time frame? This is June, just last month coming into the end of June. As you can see here, we were above the 50 period and then once we touched, that's where we start looking for this outside day pattern. Now we had one right here and on the very next day we went below. So this was giving us a clue that most likely we're headed lower in the Canadian dollar on a daily time frame. But guess what? As we say, stated, not all the time, but sometimes you will get a change in this tool because three days later, we had another outside day pattern, but this time it was exceeded to the upside. So this was telling you not to look for shorts, but the market has changed its mind and it's telling you to look to go long. So you went 250 pips really quickly at the end of June. Now we can go down to a thousand tick bar chart. Okay, A lot of people like to intraday trade the Forex markets. Well, this just doesn't work for weekly or daily bars. Let's go to a tick bar chart. All right, The dollar yen up until recently had been going straight up. How could we have applied this? This was on the first week of July. This was July 2nd, just a, a little less than two weeks ago. Now, if we see here, we had a nice 100 pip gain if you're trading this intraday. Why? Because we had the two bar pattern and the very next bar exceeded the outside bars range. So that was telling you that the US dollar on a tick bar chart was most likely going higher. So you could have made a quick 100 pips if you had some strategy that knew how to get along the dollar yen. Now, I, I showed this example. The last time I gave this presentation for FX Street was in November. And I always like to leave you with some current examples. And I showed a current weekly chart of the Euro Yen. This was a weekly chart. And that had displayed one of these outside bar patterns. Okay, the two-day two, two bar pattern. Now, this was the last time I gave this presentation in November. Now, we have the day number one. Day number two, these are actually should say week number one, week number two. So this fit the rules accordingly. This fit all the requirements. And so we waited for the next week. And when I gave this presentation, it had concluded on this week. So this was telling us, and I told all the people that attended the webinar, that most likely look for a nice, some type of uh, uptrend to the, uh, in the euro yen on a weekly time frame. Okay? So this was the clue I was giving you. And this was in November going into December. And so we all know what happened to the euro yen weekly. This is pretty much a current chart going into the beginning of July. So this shows you how powerful this tool was. I told all the members and all the students not to simply buy the euro yen at the market, but to look for it to go higher. And you may want to start looking for strategy setups to go long. Now, this is how simple this technique is. All with just one thing, learning how to listen to the market. I, as I recall, I told you that when I first started trading on the floor of the exchange, I had a very difficult time trading. My trading was tremendously complicated, just the way that uh, article stated in the Los Angeles Times. I thought it was easy, but I kept losing more and more money. In fact, I didn't think I was going to be a specialist much longer. I just couldn't seem to make ends meet. But my mentors, these were elite traders on the floor, these were specialists, taught me that, Steve, your trading is way too complicated. What was I doing? I was listening to 
way too much news. I was trying to figure what every economic report meant. I was just acting like a leaf at the mercy of the wind when a, when a jobs claim came out, when an economic report came out, what was going on in the world. Plus, I had too many indicators. And what they said is they said, Steve, you are listening to far too many outside sources. There's only one thing you need to listen to, and that's the market. So once they taught me these techniques, that's when my trading started to become more consistent. So that's what I try to teach my students and the people that attend these webinars for FX Street, is that trading is really easy. It's just ourselves that gets in the way. We make it more complicated than it has to be with too many chat rooms, too many uh, news events, too many uh, indicators. And that's why most traders lose. Up to 90% of most traders lose everything that they have for trading. So keep your trading as simple as possible with little techniques like this, and you'll get on that road to consistency. Now, as I left the, the members of the presentation in November uh, with a clue, here's one that I just took. Uh, I took this snapshot roughly about 20 minutes ago before I started the presentation. Okay? And this was an actual weekly chart of the euro dollar, current chart of the uh, weekly bar chart of the euro dollar. Now, looking at this, it looks like we're oscillating back and forth uh, since April, going up, going down, a little nicer rally, but then falling out of bed. And right now, we're just kind of oscillating around the 50 period simple moving average. But once you've taken my presentation, what do you find? Here is an outside day pattern on the weekly time frame of the euro dollar. Okay, and a lot of people are wondering what's the euro dollar going to do with the Fed, with what's going on economically. We don't care. We don't care what the Fed is saying. We don't care what some economic report says. All we're looking at is this. At specialist trading, we're just telling our members, look at this if you're trading the euro dollar on a weekly time frame. If the next bar, if the next week exceeds either the higher low of this range, that's most likely what the euro is going to do. So we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to try and figure it out. Okay, let the market tell us what it's going to do. So this is a little clue here. Obviously, this chart will complete tomorrow at the close of tomorrow's uh, uh, exchange uh, session. And then we'll wait to see what happens next week. Remember, all we need to see is if it penetrates either this high range here or this low range. It doesn't have to close above there. It doesn't have to, uh, you know, uh, stop there and then, you know, stay below there. It doesn't matter. If it trades one pip above the high, most likely we're going to be going higher. If it trades one pip below the low, most likely we're going lower. Okay. Once again, this is not guaranteed, but it's a high probability technique for finding out the current trend. Okay, so let's recap. I just shared with you a simple but high probability technique for spotting trend changes in the Forex markets. By now, you should understand how to figure it out yourself. All we're going to look at are uh, just basically two different tools. We're going to look at the 50 periods of moving average and an outside day bar pattern. Remember, you can apply this to either tick charts, the way I showed you, a five-minute chart, or a weekly chart. doesn't matter. But we want to make sure that one of the bars in this outside day bar pattern is touching, intersecting the 50 periods of moving average. Once we have that set up, then we just look to see if the high or the low is penetrated of that second bar. And that's it. Okay. Once you know uh, if it's been penetrated to the upside or the downside, then you must apply some type of strategy to just trade with the trend. That's how simple it is. Remember, once you get in sync with the trend, trading becomes a lot simpler and you get on that road to consistency. My goal is to teach you the same things that were taught me. Everything I'm teaching you was taught to me some 37 years ago that was able to turn my way of trading around. So that's why I instill in all my members and all my students is the specialist edge, which is really, uh, it's really rooted in simplicity. Points to remember, though, and this is where most of my students make the big mistake. They think this is a strategy. They learn how to spot it, and they go, boy, this is great. I'm going to buy at the market. And then, you know, they buy, and then, you know, price hovers around for maybe a day or two or maybe a week or two before anything happens, and they get scared, and they take a, a loss. This is not a strategy. You know, with a strategy, you need to have some type of uh, pieces of the puzzle that tell you where to enter. They tell you where to place your stop. They tell you where to exit, about money management, things about that. Uh, concern. This has nothing to do with that. This is just a directional tool for finding out the trend. You always want to trade in the direction of the trend. Remember, you can apply this to any direction in any time frame, but it's just simply a directional tool. It's not a strategy. So someone will say, well, Steve, okay, once I know the trend, I have to apply a strategy. I don't have a strategy yet. Well, if I could just take a few minutes to, to share with you what we do at Specialist Trading. We provide strategies, simple strategies that I personally use myself 
for trading. This is probably one of our simplest and one of our most popular strategies for trading the Forex markets. This is strategy number four. It's a great, great strategy. And the beauty of this is that you can transfer this onto any markets in different time frames as well. Let me show you just a few examples. Here are some examples of what we did with using strategy four. As you can see in April, here was a really nice signal to go long the euro yen. Coming into June here, we had another signal to go along the Canadian dollar, all with the simple rules of strategy number four. And then in the Australian dollar, as we stated, we've been short the Australian dollar. We continue to get short the Australian dollar. And I'll give you a clue. I think we're going to get short the Australian dollar tomorrow based on strategy number four. So this is a, a great, great strategy. As you can see, these are just some of the signals. We generate these signals and we post them for our members and students so that they know exactly where to enter where to exit, but really our goal is to teach you how to spot them on your own. Even though we provide you with the signals, I want you to be able to, to be able to see it on your own and so ultimately you don't have to rely on our emails or on our alerts. You can just find the signal on your own and that will happen after a couple of weeks of our training. So as a special for all the FX Street webinar attendees, we've dropped the price down from 695 down to 495 but this is for a limited time only. Remember this all comes with detailed instructions, I tell you where to enter, where to exit, and where to place your stops. It comes with one year of trade signal alerts, but trust me, after a month or so, you won't need those alerts. You'll be able to spot them on your own. Uh, one year of weekly trading lessons where I give a weekly webinar, just like the one I gave today, but I give you different tips and techniques. Uh, everything's on a PDF, so you can actually uh, print it out and study at your own leisure. And you also have my personal email address, so you can access me at any time you'd like. So this is for just a special uh, discount for the FX Street webinar attendees. Remember, if you would like to find out more about specialist trading, there is the uh, short and abbreviated link where you can go to the microsite that FX Street has put together for us. Okay, I'll give you a second to copy that. It's circled in green, or I believe some of you may have already gotten that before in the beginning. But once you go to the abbreviated uh, link there and you, you uh, click it on, you'll, it'll take you to the microsite and you will be able to learn more about myself. You'll see more about my background, uh, my biography, and you'll learn uh, more about our actual strategies and, and different ways to trade the Forex markets. All right, I want to thank you all for waiting to ask any questions. We are now at the question and answer portion. Remember, just to remind you, if you happen to have uh, any questions uh, regarding uh, strategies or the discounts, you can go also to our sister site, which is ProTraderStrategies.com. That's where they sell our, site, our, our strategies individually. Or if you want to contact us, you can contact our VP of Operations, that's Brett Marsh, at BrettM at SpecialistTrading.com. And then lastly, you can call us directly at area code 310 Eight four four seventy two twenty. So there's lots of ways to contact us and ask us any questions. Let me just open up the uh, question and answer box here and see. Uh, do you have techniques for ranging sideways pairs? Are you always show? Uh, are you always show for the trends? Well, uh, Boyki, that's a good question. Most of our techniques are for the trend. Strategy number four is actually a trend following technique, but it's uh, mainly used more for continuation trades where you have these kind of sideways consolidation within the trend. So even though it looks as if the market is rangy, we're kind of going sideways within a trend. And that's what we do. We wait for a continuation move either to the upside or to the downside. So uh, most of our strategies just deal with trading with the trend. If we're looking for something in a rangy market, strategy four would be the closest to that. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Let me see if there are any more questions here. If I backtrack... Um, oh, thank you, Maude. I posted that link for you so you can go and, and check out. I see here in the question and answer. Um, let's see if there are any more questions here. Uh, this is coming from Jack. Number five is for swing trading. Is number four swing trading too? That's a good question, Jack. Number four is really more for capturing those quick momentum moves. Uh, strategy five is for swing trading where it will keep you in the trade a lot longer. You'll have greater success, but you'll also have more risk. But with strategy number four, it's for capturing these quick moves so that you're in and out rather quickly and your risk isn't as great. But we also show you way if you want to stay in the trade longer. We have a, a multiple uh, ways in which to trade it. A number of our members like to trade uh, a number of contracts, so we show them how to scale out of a trade and you can stay in it actually longer if you'd like. Or for the people that have limited funds and they just want to get in and out quickly, we show you how to do that. We show you how to trade aggressively as well as conservatively. So there's lots of ways to trade it. But the difference is, is that strategy five is 
looking for that swing trade. In my opinion, it works better on daily bars. And uh, we have students that swear by it that use it on tick bars, but I use it mainly for daily bars. Whereas strategy four works in any time frame. Really, really uh, transfers well into any time frame. Okay. Um, let's see. From uh, Arvin asks, uh, 50 period simple moving average with no shift. Yes, I mean we're, we're you know we don't want to systematize this and say it has to be you know always the 50 period. I know a lot of people like to use. Fibonacci numbers or exponential. The main thing we, we really want to stress is that it, it comes down to some type of median point. And if you want to use an exponential, that's fine, or weighted, that's okay. We just tried to keep things simple and say 50 period simple moving average. That's it. So we don't really apply any shift at all. Okay? We don't apply any weighted to it. We don't apply any exponential. Just keep it simple. And by keeping it with a simple moving average. Okay? Uh, Boyke asks, uh, with candles to cover both wicks. Yes, remember, all a candle is is a different way of looking at a open, high, low, closed range bar. So all we are looking at is the range at the very high of the bar and the very low. It doesn't matter if that's a regular standard uh, open, high, low, closed bar or if it's a candle bar. It doesn't matter. We're just looking at the high of that bar and the low of that bar. Okay, And we're talking about the wicks. Yes, the extreme rip. I know a lot of people get confused with that. Uh, but remember, whatever the high of the bar was, looking at the wicks, that's the part we want to see exceeded. If whatever the low was, if we're looking at the wicks, that's the low we want to be see exceeded. Please remember, this must happen on the very next bar, though, because we're trying to catch that momentum. A lot of students make the mistake and they say, well, Steve, I found this two-bar pattern. It's been three days now and I'm still waiting for it to cross either above or below the high of the outside bar pattern. Well, the trade, or I should say the, the uh, technique is no longer valid because it's supposed to happen on the very next bar. If that bar is a weekly bar, fine. If it's a daily bar, but it has, has to happen on the very next bar because we want to see momentum. That's what we're looking for. That's the technique. Okay? Um, this is asking here, uh, Kasun is asking, I want to cover the high and low both. I want to cover high and low both. Uh, I'm not sure if you could expand on that question because soon I'm not sure what you mean uh, want to cover high and low both. Uh, so if you could kind of go into detail. I don't, perhaps you're saying what if it covers both the high and the low? Uh, yeah, that were, it could be confusing. I've never seen that before. But if it covered both the high and the low, well then guess what? It just created another outside day pattern. So what you're looking for once again is if, if, if on that you know, setup, goes above the high and above the low, well, then you just created another outside day pattern. So you look for the next day to tell you which direction it should be going. Okay? I hope that's what you're asking because I'm not really sure when you say it wants to cover high and both low. Any other questions? Remember, we have a great, great discount. You saw all of the real world examples in strategy number four. Those were actual signals that were taken by our members that we generated signals for. But remember, once again, with our education, as I stated in the very beginning of this presentation, we are an education company. We're not simply just, you know, motivated to give you signals and have you take the signals. We want you to learn what the process is behind these signals and then ultimately spot them on your, your own. But had you been with us long enough, you would have seen all of those signals if you were a member and uh, a member of the strategy number four course, and you would have been able to take all of those signals and all of those different currency pairs. And I'm sure that would have, had you taken all those signals, you could have purchased with this discount strategy number four about 10 or 20 times over. We usually sell it for close to $700. We're discounting it down a couple of down to 495. So it's a great, great deal. If you want to take advantage of a great great strategy with my learning, uh, almost a mentorship with you, uh, please, I urge you to take advantage of that low price. Okay? Remember, if you want more information, kindly go to the microsite that FX3 has provided for us, or you can go to protraderstrategies.com where we give you more information about my individual strategies, or you can contact and speak to us. Contact my VP of Operations, Brett M. at specialisttrading.com, or call us directly at area code 310-844-7220. Remember to keep an eye out on that euro dollar on the weekly chart because that may be giving you a clue as to the direction. Don't worry about what's going on in the news. Don't worry about some trading room or chat room or what some commentator says on TV. Learn how to listen to the market and you'll become much more consistent in your trading. That's our philosophy at Specialist Trading. Thank you so much for attending today. If there are more, no more further questions, thank you so much. If you do have questions, you can always contact us at 310 844 7220. We'll see you in about a month with another new tip and technique for you to trade with. 
Thanks to all the people at FX Street, and we shall see you in August. Bye-bye.